on Inland Sessions. Mateusz Walski, concertmaster and first violin in the Spokane Symphony, is joined by international concert pianist Archie Chin. I started thinking, okay, what are the pieces that are going to kind of be very accessible and the pieces that I love to play? Um, and that, that kind of represent, represent well my character. Uh, so I've, you know, obviously I had to start with something Polish. So I played the Wieniawski Obertas, which is a piece that you can learn it fairly early as you start on the violin, but it's super hard to actually master it because there's a lot of very virtuosic stuff. Uh, so I hope you guys appreciate <laughs> the work. <laughs> Asking to collaborate with Archie Chan, who is a wonderful pianist, I had a series of pieces that of that kind of a nature, kind of short and, and sparkly. And Archie was like, hmm, you know, could we play something that has some meat for the piano? And I was like, hmm, let me think. Okay. So we picked the Brahms D minor sonata, the first movement. Why? Because I think it represents this absolutely amazing opportunity for music making, which... Uh, let's face it, in the last several months have been in a very short supply for me because the, you know, the orchestra is not on. Uh, this is the first time that actually I was able to get into a space and collaborate with somebody live. Uh, and that is, you know, you don't realize what you're missing till you actually get to experience it. So when we are started to rehearse uh, and we're playing Brahms and all of a sudden you get the goosebumps out of your own playing. Uh, which almost never happens. You know, that's like kind of like the cook uh, when they would be amazed. It's like, oh, my God, how well I cook today. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, 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 so that's, why, that's why we had Brahms.
I'm the concertmaster of the Spokane Symphony, and most of the things that we play are are serious classical music. But I also want to show people that when you play music, you play all kinds of music. Even in the symphony, we do the pops concert. We play movie music. We play John Williams. All sorts of things that you know you don't necessarily box into the classical music uh, idea. So our normal musical life is very versatile, and you know we play with the rock bands as well. So, which I love doing, and I think that um, you know any mu any good music, it's worth playing. So I don't find myself being boxed in. Actually, uh, our orchestra, when we are on, uh, is very open to a number of new ideas and sounds and, and genres. <laughs> In the Spokane area, I occupy the niche known as a classical music. Quite often people ask me, you know, is this a violin or is it a fiddle? It can be both. So this is my dear friend. It was built in 1779. So it's a, it's a, it's a fairly old piece of wood. Um, and it's been through many adventures, uh, as you can see. Um, and it's the violin that is actually has been purchased for the Spokane Symphony. So when you get to be a concertmaster of the Spokane Symphony, um, then you can be lucky to, to, to play on this. And uh, it's an absolute joy and inspiration to have an instrument that can give you a sound that inspires. You know, and on one hand, you know, this thing is worth more than my house. Uh, but, but yeah, nobody, please don't, don't come in and steal it. It's not, it's not easy to pawn those things. You know, they are, they're like registers. If this, if this thing got ever lost and, and surf, surfaced somewhere else, uh, people in the business will know exactly, you know, those, are, those things are unique. So, so anyway, yeah, I mean, the, the violin that you interact with on an everyday basis uh, makes a tremendous difference if it can inspire you to, to make music, to, to look for sounds. But yet, on the other hand, you cannot approach it like uh, with a, with a huge reservation. You know, it's a, actually Joshua Bell said that the relationship between the violinist and the violin is like a relationship between the parent and a baby. On one hand, you know, you love them to death, uh, uh, and you know, you definitely don't want to leave them somewhere on the subway alone, which he managed to do. Uh, but but you know, on the other hand, you have to be sometimes firm with it. Uh, you know, you have to treat it with the respect at the same time. So I just really like that analogy. And then when we got to the Bartok uh, Romanian dances, it's just um, one of those things that is, I mean, it was a piece written for the piano, but it's so fiddly. Uh, and it's, it's such a joyful music. And I think w these days we can use all the joy and happiness that can come from... Uh, from the music uh, that we can get. So, so I thought, okay, that, that should definitely work.
I quite often find that the orchestra is built a little bit like a military unit. You have the general that essentially tells, go charge that hill. Uh, but then you have lieutenants uh, among um, uh, the, the, you know, the principals in the orchestra, so like, like his lieutenants. The most important lieutenant, that's me, my rank is just slightly above. We can occasionally talk back to general, but generally we have to do what they say. Uh, which that's why we like to do a chamber music, because that's like being a, you know, little insurgents um, on our own time. Quite often people ask, why would you use such an antiquated system to, to play music? And the reality is just simply efficiency. You know, if you had 70 people on the stage and everybody would have ability to voice their ideas and contribute artistically to how to do it in a verbal way, well, then you would have to rehearse a piece for two years before you would be able to, to put it on. So we do get a freedom in a way how we express things in a nonverbal way. So even though conductor is telling you start here and finish there, you still get tremendous amount of your own artistic input in it. Uh, but yeah, you, there's really not that much time to talk back. Uh, occasionally, if you're on the good terms with the conductor, you can say, uh, can, we, can we take it a little slower or can we take it a little faster? Uh, and if they're in a good mood, they may listen to you. Don't get me started on the trombones. You know, I, I think those are like the Horowitzers uh, in the orchestra. You know, they just love the um, sound. And uh, the violins are unfortunately a little bit like infantry. Uh, Concertmaster, I would say it's a little bit more like a, um, like a sniper. Because... Um, on one hand, you have, to, you have to play with everybody else. You're kind of like the part of the unit. But occasionally you get those moments when you get those big concert master solos. So you have to switch your hat from, I'm part of the group. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now it's your 10 seconds of delivering the most beautiful line uh, in the piece. And, and you have to be on it. And you have, you know, one shot, one kill. That's, uh, that's the mentality you have to put your head into since we are using the, the military uh, associations here. So I, th I think that for me and lots of my, uh, my other musician friends, um, the COVID situation has been really, really hard because, um, you know, we play music because we like to connect in person with other people, other human beings. And that, that human connection, especially that, that happens in the concert hall, it's, it's super unique. Uh, we are all watching the wonderful collaborations and the videos of people putting stuff online. And you go and, you know, and, and they, as wonderful as, as there are, they, they feel like, uh, you know, it's like a sugar substitute. Uh, it's like if you really love, I don't know, Coca-Cola. Um, with a real sugar, and then you have a Diet Coke. You know, that's what, to me, what it, what it feels like to listen to the, even the greatest performances, is it, it, being together, making music together, connecting with the audience, and, and, and feeding of each other, of this human contact. Uh, you know, it, it's been really, really hard to deal with that aspect, just, just, just not having it. Um, so I cannot wait when we will be able to safely go back and work together and make a awesome music uh, for the for the Spokane community you know I'm, I, I really miss my I, I really miss my friends on the stage and, and in the audience so so that's been you know it, it's been uh, a good reminder why I do what I do